This video is not financial advice, for entertainment only. Burst. Credit Suisse's shares were acquired by UBS at a 40% discount, and creditors returned to zero. Before the opening of the Asian market on Monday, the Swiss government's matchmaking was finally successful. After the Swiss government provided liquidity assistance and offered to cover part of the losses, the crisis-ridden Credit Suisse finally reached a historic acquisition agreement with another Swiss banking giant, UBS, after a series of haggling. On Sunday, March 19, local time, UBS announced that it will acquire Credit Suisse in the form of an all-stock acquisition transaction. Every shareholder who holds 22.48 shares of Credit Suisse will receive one UBS share, equivalent to 0.76 Swiss francs per share, with a total consideration of 3 billion Swiss francs, approximately 3.25 billion US dollars. The purchase price represents about 40% off Credit Suisse's market capitalization on Friday, the latest trading day. Based on Friday's closing price, Credit Suisse's market capitalization is about 7.37 billion Swiss francs, and Credit Suisse shareholders will lose another 60% on the basis of Friday's closing price. What is even worse is that about 17 billion US dollars of bond investors, the value of their Credit Suisse bonds will be zero. Swiss government officials are rushing to rescue 167-year-old Credit Suisse, one of the world's largest wealth managers and one of the world's largest wealth managers, more than a week after Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank collapsed, respectively, the second and third largest US banks. As one of the top 30 global banks considered systemically important, any deal involving Credit Suisse could affect financial markets as a whole. The Swiss government raced against time this weekend to secure the UBS Credit Suisse deal, trying to avoid a turbulent market opening in Asia on Monday. But until the official announcement of the acquisition, various recent news showed that the marriage between UBS and Credit Suisse was full of twists and turns low. UBS said that after the merger with Credit Suisse, UBS's current chairman Colm Kelleher and CEO Ralph Hammers will each hold the same position in the new company. The combined company's total investment assets will exceed $5 trillion, and the merger is expected to cut the company's annual costs by more than $8 billion by 2027. At the same time as the UBS official announcement, the Swiss government announced on Sunday that in order to help UBS take over the assets of Credit Suisse, it will provide a loss guarantee of up to 9 billion Swiss francs. Specifically, assuming that Credit Suisse's investment portfolio suffers losses, UBS will bear the first 5 billion Swiss francs of losses, the Swiss government will bear the next 9 billion Swiss francs, and any further losses will be borne by UBS. The Swiss National Bank, SNB, issued a statement on Sunday saying that it provided substantial liquidity assistance to support UBS's acquisition of Credit Suisse. In addition to being able to use SNB's existing tools to obtain SNB's liquidity without restrictions, Credit Suisse and UBS can also obtain liquidity assistance loans with a privileged creditor status at the time of bankruptcy in accordance with the emergency regulations of the Swiss Federal Council, with a total amount of up to 100 billion Swiss lang, approximately $108 billion. With the support of the Swiss Federal Government, the Domestic Financial Market Supervisory Authority, FINMA, and the central bank, the bailout will ensure financial stability and protect the Swiss economy, the SNB said. FINMA also explained on behalf of the government that even if it remained solvent, Credit Suisse could become illiquid, so government action was necessary. Both banks have unlimited access to the SNB's existing facilities and receive liquidity from the SNB subject to the guidance on monetary policy instruments. Another key clause of the deal is the full write-down of Credit Suisse's additional Tier 1, AT1, 
bonds worth about 16 billion Swiss francs, $17.3 billion, notional. This means that these face value bonds will become worthless. This would be the largest write down in Europe's $275 billion AT1 market. The scale of the loss far exceeds the 1.35 billion euro write down on the bonds of Spanish bank Banco Popular SA in 2017, when the bank was bought by Santander. AT1 bonds were introduced in Europe after the financial crisis to cover losses in the event of bank failures. If a bank's capital adequacy ratio falls below a certain level, holders of such bonds face permanent losses, or the bonds are converted into equity. That's all for today. Please subscribe and leave your comments below. Thanks for watching.